Uh, Yotam Kafina, Yotam, a very good afternoon to you, my friend. Thank you, Jeremy. It really was uh, a year ago, which I find extraordinary, that, 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 that seemingly everything came to a halt. We'd seen what had happened in Ukraine, but the severity and the horror of when that a festival was attacked by those Hamas terrorists will live with, with Jewish people, certainly, and I think the rest of the world forever. Absolutely, not just the festival, all of the small villages across, uh, along the Gaza border were attacked, not just by Hamas, by other terror groups, and also by thousands of civilians who crossed the border in euphoria, rioted, looted, and brought uh, Israeli civilians back into Gaza, where they've been held hostage, uh, a lot of them, 101 since uh, last year. So this is a day that is just the most traumatic problem in Israel's history, and it's far from over because those hostages are still held inside Gaza. And I think really what worries Israelis today is that not even today when they are mourning can they have just five minutes of peace. This morning, Hamas fired rockets at those people who were near the Gaza border who were commemorating the victims of October 7, exactly at the same time as they were beginning their memorial. And a few, uh, about an hour ago, uh, the, the Houthi rebels from Yemen fired a ballistic missile over central Israel. So there's no rest here. There's no time really to to gather your minds or to, to try and, uh, and heal this wound or the trauma. And especially for the civilians, especially for the civilians in Gaza, the civilians in Lebanon, they're all caught in the jihadi onslaught on Israel, which is just not ending. It's really interesting, and I'm going to say the wrong word, uh, frightening for me. I was, doing, I was reading a bit this morning. Check this for the United Kingdom. I've talked very freely. In fact, I get abused uh, on social media, uh, as do my kids who I p tagged into something the other day because I, I dare to speak out for Israel. I'm called everything under the sun. That's absolutely fine with me. Do you know that in the United Kingdom, 10% frightening of 18 to 24 year olds hold a favorable view of Hamas? Like, I want to get their heads and bang them together and say, this is a terrorist organisation. You want to talk about equality and the way you treat people, work out what Hamas does to the people it represents. An anti-Semitic hate crime in London has skyrocketed since the 7th of October. We had the most horrible image yesterday, Yossam. I don't know if you know this. A man filmed destroying a Jewish memorial on the eve of the 7th of October. I don't know where this has come from, but how do you stop it? What, what happens to the poor Jews who are being literally ostracised across the world? Jeremy, you think that 10% is a lot? Hold, hold my beer, as they say. There is just a survey that came out today in Denmark, my home country. More than 30% of, of Danish Muslims believe that the, the attack on October the 7th was justified. More than 30%. Wow. That is outrageous. And a, and a country like Denmark is not, it, it, it's a liberal country, but it's not, it doesn't have a history of terror sympathy or. Well, they have um, anti-Semitism, obviously, due to uh, decades of, you know, anti-Semitism in Europe. But generally, it is frightening. The past year has really shown the real side and the real face of many people, not just in Europe, in the United States, Canada, South America. It's frightening, and I don't know where it do comes you, from. Do you think, let, let's, let's, the elephant in the room, is it quite, just hear me out. Netanyahu, of course, is not everybody's cup of tea. I think very quickly after that October the 7th attacks, realising that he would be blamed by the Jewish people, he, he set to with what he said. But then he said, I don't believe in a two-system, a, a two-state two nation, which didn't go down very well. He seems to now be more popular with the Israeli people. But I suspect that those youngsters, generation whatever they're called, um, entitled, I call them, Generation Entitled, not Z or whatever it is. Um, I think these people will look at the pictures, they'll see it on social media, they'll see what's happening in Gaza, and they see only one side of this argument. I always, and I'll put it to you, Yotam, and I, and I said it already 30 minutes ago, so I repeat myself on the show, I was told by a really close Jewish friend of mine um, that, you know, whereas most people get sat down, 12, 13, facts are live, as a Jew, Jewish kid, you get sat down by your parents to explain about your DNA, and part of that is, is that six million Jews were gathered simply for being Jewish. That is going to create a mentality amongst Jewish people, isn't it? Amongst Israeli people. Of course it is. Absolutely. Well, listen, there, there are many things that we can point to for the reason of, of anti-Semitism. One of them is, of course, a lack of education in schools. Uh, kids are simply not learning about the, the Holocaust and the horrors of it. 
and and the aftermath of of of, uh, of the Second World War and the establishment of the Israeli state. And the second thing is also that the media, and I have said this from day one, they played a huge part in failing to inform people what's happening here. And one of those reasons is that you cannot show the morbid visuals and the pictures and the footage from October the 7th on your show, for example, because it's simply too, it's it's too much. You can't show it, but what you can show is this will bombard Gaza because it's different images. But if you don't see what's happening on the ground on the Israeli side of the conflict, how could you expect anyone to have sympathy for Israel? And if you're being fed on a daily basis that Israel is committing genocide, is bombing indiscriminately, and that 40,000 civilians have been killed, why wouldn't you hate Israel? That's my question. So the media, I think, failed also to inform people that Hamas are actually terrorists. They're not soldiers or fighters, they're terrorists. And if you don't call them what they are, how can you expect young people to understand what's happening here? And we have a state broadcaster, I'm sorry to tell you, in this country called the BBC, which still to this day, 12 months on from this tragedy, uh, that changed the world, that changed the Middle East, still refuses, Yotam, uh, to call Hamas a terrorist organisation. Listen, we thank you as ever for being on.